me in this service. I am not going back the same way I came. Let God hear your voice this morning. Lord, touch me. Let your healing hand locate me in this service. Let your healing hand locate me in this service. I must go home free today. I must go home free today. I must go home free today. Lord, let your healing hand locate me. Let your healing hand locate me. I must go home free today. I must go home free today. The bonding of the wicked must leave me today. The yoke of sickness must lose its grip in my life today. Jesus, heal me. You are the healer. Heal me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Today, whatever God has not planted that is eating up your health, will let it go by force. I say they will let you go by force. I say again, that sickness will fade away today. That high blood pressure will lose grip from your life. If you are saying amen, say better amen. In Jesus' name we pray. It is my new dawn era. Put your hands together for the Lord and please take your seat. Engaging the supernatural power of love. Every child of God is redeemed back to the nature of God. When man sinned, he lost his original nature. No wonder scripture says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It takes the love of God for the nature of God to be restored. So redemption brings us back to the actual nature of God. If you are not redeemed, it is impossible for you to walk in the love of Christ. You can be good and not be redeemed. He's a good man, but he's not redeemed. Because he doesn't have Christ in him. Scripture says, if a man be in Christ... Not if a man be in church. You can be in church and not be redeemed. I was watching an interview of a Jew who has lived all his life in America. He said, as a Jew, we don't know that word called sin. So he said, I have not seen. That word sin was strange to him. They now began to show him instances how he fell into sin. He said, wait a minute, yes, yes. He said, when you look at a woman lustfully, you have committed sin in your heart. Did he now done on him? Okay, it's like you're correct. Meaning, you need Jesus Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Until Christ is in you, you cannot leave the nature of God. It is impossible for any believer to walk in love without Christ in him. It is also impossible for you to flow in the supernatural without the love of God. 
The love of God is the engine room for supernatural living. The engine room for supernatural living. No wonder when your love nature begins to die, your supernatural nature begins to fade. You are losing touch. Signs and wonders can't take place through you. Why? You don't have the trigger. It's just like a very big car now without an, an engine. The car is beautiful though. They even say it gets AC. But it doesn't have engine. Can it go anywhere? So you can't flow in the supernatural without a deposit of love. But every one of us here carry that deposit of the love of God. The moment you are born again, you are sealed with the seal of the love of God. There is a divine seal in you. Nurturing that seed of love is what enables you to grow from face to face in supernatural manifestation. It is nurtured. Just like you plant a seed now, you nurture it onto a full-grown tree. You nurture it. That is how the love of God in you is nurtured until you begin to manifest the wonders of God in limitless dimensions. Limitless. Don't forget, Scripture said, I and the children God has given to me, they are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Say the Lord that dwelleth in Mount Zion. You are for sign. You are for wonder. But your wonderful nature is triggered by the seed of love deposited in you. Because that seed of love creates a supernatural atmosphere for wonder to manifest. They ask the blind man, who healed you? He says, Jesus, he says, this, this evil man, this man, this evil man, he says, one thing I know, God heareth non-sinners. Can a sinner walk signs and wonder? Except he's a magician. So it's impossible for anyone to flow in signs and wonders without the seed of love in him. Like we are meant to understand, love bonds us together with God. When you are bonded in love, you are tied together with God. You are inseparable. You cannot be divided. You are connected, jointly fitted. And once you are bonded in love with God, your desire will be flowing with God's desire. Why? Because you are carrying him inside of you. Now, should I shock you? Your wife is in you. You are in her. Am I saying the truth? Has he ever occurred to you, you were thinking of something, and where she was, she was thinking of the same thing. And when you mention, you say, ah, I was thinking about this thing too. Now, it is not a coincidence. And two shall become what? One. Two shall become what? One. You may call it so tie. That's the name you know. But by divinity, they have been joined together. So watch out. If they have been consistent fellowship, their thoughts will be flowing in the same direction. That brings us to this now. If you are truly bonded in love with God, your heart will be panting after souls. You will love souls the way God loved them to be rescued. And once your heart is panting after souls, 
the desire to pray for someone to be rescued will be born in inside of you. The desire to pray for someone to be delivered will be born in inside of you. Why? The thing that is in you is in God. So if truly this same love that is in God is in you, how come your passion for soul is so weak? It will surprise you that since we started this outreach, there are some people that have not even come once by mistake. By mistake, they have never appeared once. It only shows that your heart is not where God's heart is. Yes, it is natural. It's even happening that a husband and wife can be lying on the same bed. They have done travel go another place. Only. Is it correct? Very correct. They may be on the same bed though, but this person's heart is somewhere else. This one's heart is another place. Physically they are together, but spiritually they are not together. That is why it is true that you are in church, but your heart is not in God. Because scripture says, where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. Where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. If your heart is in God, I want to let you know, there is nothing to look for outside. Every blessing you are seeking for will flow to you. I say it will flow to you. I say it will flow to you. Jesus had an undying passion to feed the hungry both with the world and with raw food. No wonder they were always gathering. Why? He wanted them to feel the love of God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When there is love, giving is not a struggle. Anytime you are struggling in giving, check your love. It may be Taiwan love. Anytime there is love, giving is not a struggle. If you are struggling in giving, then you don't have the true love of God. Like we said last Sunday, by the end of this month, we are reaching out again in a mega dimension. Are you what I'm saying now? Now, our concern is not just that uh, let them gather, let them gather. No. We are wiping away tears from men. Wiping away shame from men. Do you know that lack of food can cause depression? If you are a student, if you are not eating well, you can't read well. Am I correct? Your, your reading will not balance. You want to read food, go to the... the your stomach will say, stop this thing, I never eat. Has it happened to anyone here? Stop this thing, I never eat. But watch out very soon. You will have more than enough to eat. And also to give out to your friends. You better say a good amen because it's happening. I was once there, so I know what I'm talking about. Zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero water. <laughs> Praise God. So growing in love enforces you to grow in wonders. You grow in wonders. But I want you to understand this morning. You can't be growing in love and be growing in sickness. <laughs> Is it possible? You are growing in love and growing in sickness. No way! <laughs> you can't be growing in love. Love is a nature. Not physical nature, spiritual nature. It's an identity. You can't be growing in love and be growing in affliction. 
You can't be growing in love and your soul is tormented. No! It is not the love of God. Please, those of you who are not here in the first service, please do yourself a favor and buy the tape of the first service. For you to live healthy, you need right thinking, right eating, right living, and right what? Right talking. And we are made to understand that some people are not living healthy now just by wrong thinking. Thoughts of bitterness, thoughts of anger, thoughts of hatred is killing you. You are not healthy. We have more sick minds in church than sick bodies. Someone can be in church now is boiling with anger. Don't you know that anger poisons the blood? Before you know what's happening, you are now manifesting offensive body odor to the point that people can't stay around you. They will stay around you, they will be doing like this. Oh my God. When will service be over? <laughs> hey, I want to change location. I want to change location. That goes to let you know that that person if they examine the person where, you will confirm what I'm telling you now. Once your blood is poisoned, you can catch high blood pressure. From there, stroke. So, what kills people is internal. It's less of external, although we are going to deal with the external now in this second service. So, please, you need to check it. Watch your mouth. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death, and them that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Watch your mouth. Watch what you say. What you say can kill you and can make you. Watch what you say. Yes, there is freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is also freedom to die. You can talk your way to death. Yes, now. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death. The them that love you shall eat the food thereof. So the one you want, keep talking. Your mouth either puts you into trouble or it will, it will put you into good health. That's why you can hear someone who just say, Pastor, will I say, I go sick. And the moment you say, Billy, I say, I go sick. Eh? Some they even say, that's my sickness, don't come. My sickness. They call it my sickness. They are the possessor of the sickness. So the thing come and go, come and go. As you call it, the thing answers you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Others is the food they eat. Some people eat carelessly and they die carelessly. They, they don't even watch what they what enters their mouth. Eh? Man, hunger day. Hunger day does not mean that you should eat anything you see. So please watch it. Lastly, right living. You can't live right with a bad conscience. Your conscience is what defines whether you are living right. Your conscience is your internal policeman. You can silence everybody, but you can't silence your conscience. Anything you do, it will put a check on you. It will be telling you this thing you are doing is bad. This way you are going is not the way you are going before. You are not behaving like this before. How come you have changed? Who is doing you? Your conscience. 
It's an internal policeman. It will be policing you. It will be checkmating everything you are doing. Everything you are doing, your conscience is there. Praise God. Like I said before, you can't be walking in love and be growing in sickness. Once the nature of God is on the rise, sickness is dying. But hear this. Every sickness is an oppression of the devil. Sickness is an oppression. The devil takes advantage of ignorance of the people to oppress them. But I want you to hear this. No sickness. Say with me, no sickness. No sickness. Has the permission of God to terminate your life. No sickness. But you know, the enemy takes advantage of your ignorant state by creating fear in your heart, creating doubt in your heart, making you feel you can't come out of this affliction. By making reference to people, you know, seeing that so this person, you know what happened, you go, I saw this person, you know, you know see us in the I saw this person, you know what happened, see as he be. He creates fear. So the more oppressed you are, the more delayed you become in taking your deliverance. Oppression is the gateway to depression. They flow together. The moment you are oppressed, watch out. You line up for depression. The enemy also oppresses people with sickness by telling them that God has not forgiven them. Hence, that's why he's delaying you with sickness. He's delaying you. God is just delaying you. But I want to let you know from the place we read in the call to worship who he lets all thy diseases. You forgive all thy iniquities and heal it all thy diseases. So, he didn't heal you for you to take it back again. When he healed you, he healed you complete. The fact that a man by the pool of Bethesda stayed 38 years does not mean that your own should grow to 38 years before you will be free. The woman with the issue of blood was not bound by her choice, but she was bound by her ignorance. Ignorance. Ignorance can keep you bound. It can chain you. It can lock you up in the prison. But I have one good news for you today. Anyone under the yoke of oppression Today, that spell will be destroyed. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say it better amen. Yeah. Any healing we desire is made possible by our faith. That was why Jesus asked the man by the pool of Bethesda, Would thou be made whole? Would thou be made whole? And the man was saying, I have no man. And he answered, he said, it is to you according to your faith. Faith in the healer and faith in the word is your guarantee. Now we have what we call covenant mysteries that guarantee total healing. The healing power of God is like a deposit. Just as this communion is now is a deposit of God's healing. Measured. It can be measured. I 
And whatever you want, you can take it. Tell your neighbor you can take it. Electricity can be measured by the current that is discharged. Likewise, your healing can be measured by the power flow from this communion. How can it be measured? Your faith. The woman said, if only I can touch the arm of his garment, I will be made whole. If only I can touch. This communion is God's provision for all round healing, all round health, all round deliverance. It is ordained for our longevity. <laughs> it is an antidote to death. It swallows sickness. So there is no escape route for any sickness that followed anyone here today. That amen is too weak. Yeah. Whatever you see this communion do for you, that is what it will do for you. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. The communion is a life injecting mystery. Mystery. It injects life. So it swallows whatever is anti life. Whatever is contrary to your total life, the communion swallows it. It transfuses divine life. Anything that wants to destroy you, it also comes as a destroyer. It destroys the works of the wicked. It neutralizes enchantments. It paralyzes divination. Oh, I remember one of our members, one of my station they gave her injection in the dream. That is witchcraft injection. Injection they didn't give you in the physical. They are not giving you in the dream. Do you know what? She fell sick automatically. And foolishly enough, she didn't understand what was happening to her. She now went and was doing scan. Did they see which for microscope? When you begin seeing which for microscope, So when the nurse came and told me that it was in the injection they gave her in the dream, I said, ah, so you don't go give doctor that money. Well, you have blessed their pockets. No problem. They at least you are, if you didn't come, they won't work. But at least now you have gone, they have work. But Jesus will heal you. They fire the arrow in the realm of the spirits. This communion also moves in the realm of the spirits. Oh, you don't know? You think we are just eating flesh and blood? Jesus said, this is my flesh. Not when he was dead. Not after he resurrected. He said, this is my flesh. And this is my blood. He said, he that eats my flesh and drink my blood, I in him and him in me. It is not natural. It is supernatural. So every time you are partaking of the communion, the healing Jesus is appearing to you. The healing Jesus is confronting what is attacking you. The healing Jesus is destroying what is destroying you. Jesus took it, not that uh, after he has resurrected, he now came back and was telling them, no, before. He said, this is my body. This is my body. The communion has power to handle emotional sickness, spiritual sickness, and body sickness. 
after we gave her that communion, do you know what happened? She was restored. She was made whole. It was an arrow. I've heard of people eating in the dream and they fall sick. It was a witchcraft restaurant that they use in bewitching you. Oh, you don't know there is witchcraft restaurant? That's why you can sleep and you do and... <laughs> They are feeding you full time. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And do you know the funniest thing? When you wake up, your mouth will be smelling as if you ate. True or false? You don't want to agree now. <laughs> there was a young man that was to go for an interview. A day before the interview, they gave him pan wine in the dream. <laughs> they gave him pan wine in the dream. Do you know what happened? He slept over day, not overnight. He slept over day. Do you know when he woke up? Around 11 o'clock. When he now woke up and realized that he had an interview, before he could finish and get to the place, it was already over. This was a clear bewitchment. Any power bewitching you, their assignment will end today. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Jesus represents bodily the fullness of God. So what is in this communion is the fullness of God. Say with me, the fullness of God. The fullness of God. But your faith <laughs> is the capital price you need for every sickness to be destroyed. For every disease to be wiped out. God will not step in until your faith is seen. When your faith is seen, power flows. The flow of power is determined by your faith. This communion has the potency to generate power for you, but it is at the mercy of your faith. If faith is not, God sees our faith. Scripture says in Acts chapter 3, when Peter and John saw that this man had faith, they saw, say with me, they saw, that he had faith to be healed. They said unto him, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man stood up and walked. They saw. So everyone that is seated here now, inside and outside, God is seeing your faith. And as he's seen it, that is how power will be flowing in your direction. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. That's why I want you to hear this. Faith does not watch. Faith acts. It goes contrary to feeling. Feeling does not generate power. Action is what generates power. Faith does not watch. Faith acts. That is why healing is personal. Now, that man that was by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years, why didn't the people come in, help him to roll into the water? It was a personal thing. They can help you roll in and power still not flow. There are things people can't help you do. Scripture says it is to you, not according to your friends. It is to you according to your faith. It is to you according to your faith.
So no one can receive healing for you. You have to take it by yourself. Say with me, I'm taking it by myself. I want to announce to someone there is no oppressor that will voluntarily release his captive. If you must be free, you need what we call the violence of faith. You need the violence of faith. I pity anyone that is calling any sickness my sickness. That my sickness, don't come again now. Every sickness is a stranger to your body. And scripture says, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And whosoever defileth this temple, God himself shall destroy. So sickness is ordained for destruction. Whosoever defileth this temple, we are focusing on it in the, sec in the third service, terminating the afflictor. Now we are terminating the affliction. In Africa, most afflictions are sponsored. Am I correct? That's why when they fly some people abroad, even the word doctor, they say, nothing is wrong with him. Nothing is wrong with him. They know now. <laughs> they don't know that uh, in Africa there's always a call of tomorrow. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> even with the physical sickness, they can even be tying you. Africa. Hear me and hear me well. According to Dr. Polenente, you need brutal faith to survive here. What did I say? You get money, trouble. You no get money, trouble. I remember a sister did wedding. I think I've shared this testimony before. <laughs> Someone came and gave her bread and said, eat this bread and block your stomach. That was how she carried barrenness. Until God showed up. I don't know what they have tampered with in your life. But I have this conviction that today, someone will be free. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. We had a communion service of this nature. A notable surgeon in University of Just Teaching Hospital sneaked into the service with the wife. He has been suffering what they call kidney stone. So the wife now told him that, uh, let's go to church today. They are having healing communion service in refuge. So he now came. So as he came, you know, too much book, no problem. Are you around say now? When you know book too much, it may be difficult for this thing to work for you. Because they are used to examining, examining, inference, analysis, confusion, confusion. I hear what I'm saying. <laughs> but somehow, somehow, the wife was there praying, Lord, let your power touch my husband. Lord, let your power touch my husband. As he partake of this communion, the woman was just praying. So the man just holistically followed the wife, went and took the communion for the first time in his life. They were even preparing to travel to go and do surgery and remove the kidney stone. As he partook of the communion, kidney stone dissolved. Don't clap. Hear the testimony. 
So the man was now observing truly whether he's free. So the first day passed, no sign. The second day passed, no sign. The third day passed, no sign. He told the wife, honey, that thing is gone. Oh. I'm not feeling it. I think we need to go and do checkup. When they went to do checkup, kidney stone disappear. Do you know what? Any day is service time. You will call the wife. Where are you? He said, please be going. Be going to church. Be going to church. Be going to church. Be going to church. So the wife is now the one going to church. Going to church. Going to church. Do you know why? Something has happened to him. There's another major lawyer they brought one time. He was suffering from cataracts. His own cataracts is now making him go blind. He has gone for surgery three times. He has gone for surgery. He will do the thing will come again. Do you know what I did? I just give him communion. I say, go and wash your eye. Go back here now. Wash your eye. <laughs> As he left that day, no cataracts again. But hear me, you are saying, hey, it is to you according to your faith. What you believe is what works. What you believe, don't believe never works. What you believe is what works. Just like the normal white blood cell and red blood cell have what we call antibodies. The antibodies, they fight. Say with me, they fight. Now, this is the life of Jesus. Judging. Say with me, judging. The communion is not coming to plead mercy for your body. The communion is coming to judge every affliction. It's not coming to plead mercy. Jesus went to the cross as a lamb. Returned back as a lion. So if sickness is messing up your body, you say, ah, you are messing up what I paid for, you will, pay, you will suffer for it. So the communion is coming as an instrumental judger, judging every sickness, judging every disease, by saying, who gave you permission to enter here? Clear now! I want to say to someone, whatever has entered your body illegally, by the communion, they will be judged. By the communion, they will be flushed out. He pleads for mercy for sinners. But for every affliction, he goes as an instrument of judgment. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Whosoever defileth this temple, he said, God himself shall destroy so the communion comes as a destroyer. So when you are partaking of the communion, whatever is defiling my body, by this communion you are judged. And every of your works is flushed out. And hear me? Whatever is not in agreement with your total head will be flushed out. If you are saying amen, say better amen. So every time we partake of the communion, the hand of God, the power of God manifests through that communion. Whether a spell was cast over you, the yoke will be destroyed. I said the yoke will be destroyed. The communion has power to heal memory loss. Say with me, memory loss. Some people just stay, they forget. They forget, they forget. It's like they have stolen their brain. Scripture says when he gave them the communion, their eyes were open. Their understanding was enlightened. So as you partake of this communion, whatever power is behind memory loss, there will be restoration for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. I remember one of our members he had an understanding that God can heal him of weak erection. Now, because of this, he could not propose to any sister. 
Not that he had HIV or nothing. Nothing. We just had. It's an attack. So he had this understanding. He started taking the communion. Started taking the communion. Started taking the communion. So one day he now came. Say, Pastor, God has healed me. I said, What thing do you? He said, My thing don't they work? I said, What happened? He said, I will not lie to you. I cannot propose to any sister. Because I don't know what thing do I'm on. The thing just be like uh, one banana when they agree wake up. <laughs> so, me myself, I was even confused. And I said, Pastor, my manhood was dead. My manhood was dead. So I would drink the communion and I would rub it. I said, no, it's a shabab. <laughs> Well, as far as God was concerned, God was seeing his faith. I might say something to somebody. He said, Pastor, the thing don't they work? I said, well, I go propose quick, quick. <laughs> go propose quick, quick. Go and marry. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? We had a sister, a nurse. In fact, she was a senior matron. Sister Elizabeth. Not here. Before we now begin to look who is Elizabeth. <laughs> this sister had what they call the issue of blood. Anytime a brother come, she would just be getting unnecessarily angry. So she, they have branded her, that sister that is always frowning her face. And truly, truly, she was frowning her face. They now thought it was a normal thing. She now came one day and said, Pastor, I want to say something. I have not said it before to any pastor. But I want you to join me in faith. I said, I'm not joining you in faith. I will show you what we do. He said, do you know I wear pampas? I said, what is it? He said, I'm suffering from the issue of blood. He said, I spend my money every month. I collect salary on a heavy drugs. When I mean heavy, heavy. He said, I was fatter than this, but now look at how I am. The drugs are draining me because of this blood issue. I said, well, there is one person that can heal you. His name is Jesus. I said, Pastor, I'm born again. No? I said, yes, you are born again, but I want to bring you to higher understanding. Understanding differs. I said, do you know that in this communion there is a personality? I tried to give her an instance. Now, the moment someone dies, you cannot extract blood. Through of us, it fades away. And scripture says the life of the flesh is in the blood. There is a personality behind the blood. It is not just a personality. It is the spirit of God. That powers our blood. Our physical blood is powered by God. So when the spirit goes, the blood disappears. So I said, that personality is in the communion. She said, wait a minute. I'm a nurse. I know what you are talking about. But I didn't understand it in this dimension. I said, every time you take this communion, declare what you want. Jesus, you are the healer and you are in the blood. Dry up the blood for me. This blood issue cannot continue when you are inside me. That was how she took it. And before you know what is happening, this issue of blood dried up. What I am saying happened in March by August. She agreed. I mean, around April, May, a brother came. She quickly agreed. August, they married.
there is a personality behind the blood. What makes for the appearance of the personality is our faith. Faith attracts the spirit of God. Fear attracts the spirit of the devil. Every time faith is released, the personality appears. Just like scripture said, oil was poured, but the spirit came. What made the spirit to come is faith. Oil was poured, but the spirit came. As you drink the communion in faith, the spirit comes. Who is that spirit? The healing spirit of God. It's going to appear for your healing today. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Oh, this testimony just happened last week and they are traveling to Canada on Wednesday. One of my members, she had... <laughs> The ovariances were so massive and terrible. I said, well, I'm not a doctor, but I know communion can make the ovariances to shrink. Say what you mean, shrink. Yeah. As we left, she has not called me. So I saw a missed call. Was he on Wednesday or on Thursday? I said, Ronke, this one you call me. You see me for a dream. He burst into laughter. He said, Pastor, I have good news for you. I said, what's the good news? He said, number one, we are traveling this Wednesday. Number two, that thing that I told you about, the thing I shrank. I took it to the same doctor. He was asking me, where did I go? And I told him what I've been taking is the communion. And remember, you prayed. As I partake of this communion, ovariances shrink. 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 That was how the thing shrink to a very tiny line. Now, in fact, it is infinitesimal. Useless. I want to say to you, whatever God has not planted that is discomforting you, it will shrink in the name of Jesus. Well, I don't know if I remember the daughter is in Abuja. I've only seen her after the first baby. The fibroid was massive and dangerous. Pregnancy has taken place. The, the pregnancy has grown to three months, and the doctor said, Let's remove it. I said, Wait a minute, let me think. I called one of my doctor friends, very close friend, he's a believer, solid believer. I said, Prof, what is the implication of pregnancy and fibroid? He said, fibroid is even number nine to hinder pregnancy from taking place. I said, what in a situation where it is massive and the baby is growing? He said, it can affect. I said, how? If it is massive, he said, there may not be adequate growth for the baby. I said, okay, what do you suggest? He said, it's only divine intervention. I said, okay, thank you. Immediately I dropped the call, I had the word fibroid, shrink, baby, grow. So I called her back. I said, from today, you'll be taking communion. As you take the communion, fibroid, shrink, baby, grow. She has delivered the first one, normal. The second one, they had to do surgery to bring out the fibroid and bring out the baby. So she has to now. Hear me and hear me where? This is not magic. This is supernatural. If this can heal HIV, it can wipe out any deadly thing. Now, even if they fired an arrow to you, against you, this communion will heal you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. There is no sickness that can survive the presence. The communion announces a presence. He said, what led thee, O thou see, that thou fled it? Thou Jordan, that thou was driven back. He said, tremble thou it at the presence of the Lord. Should I tell you something? I just remember one of my lawyer, one of my daughter in Benin Church, Sapele Road. Because she 20, at 23, this one is clearly a witchcraft attack. 
at 23. How can you be having weak and dry eggs? It's not normal. In fact, at 23, you are over fertile. Uh, am I correct? Madawa? Am I correct? At 23, it's one touch. The husband does not need to be asking a, just one touch. Why are you laughing? <laughs> she said she went to for scan three different places and they said that she has dry eggs. I said, God punish that winch. And because of it now, the husband now started misbehaving. I called him, I said, if I flog you, you know, I won't flog you in the day. I will flog you in the night. Your head will be correct. I said, behave yourself. Oh. So you now say, sorry. I tell you, he was frustrated. I said, shut up. She's under attack, so fight with her. Fight the thing with her. So I now gave her a prayer point. She prayed for two days. I said, from now, you'll be taking communion regular. Guess what happened? After the prayer... And she took the communion, she became over fertile. Say with me, over fertile. The communion has power to restore fertility. It's stronger than the hormonal drugs you are taking. And before you know what's happening, she became pregnant. Pastor, Pastor, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I said, take her easy. Pastor, I'm pregnant. You don't know how excited I am. Before I know, I see Richard can 5,000 Boom! Should I tell you something? Whatever the enemy has disfigured in your life, there will be recovery for you now. I'm not telling you testimony on paper. I'm telling you life testimonies. Life testimonies. <laughs> I just remember one. One young man came to church. He said, Pastor, they have collected my testes. I said, who collected? He said, they touched me. I don't know who touched me. The thing has disappeared. Is this not the cup which the Lord has blessed? I said, Lord, as he partake of this communion, let his testes be restored. He said, now only one day before... Now only one, oh, I say the two will come back. It will be two, balance. One left, one right. <laughs> I'm saying it, you people are laughing. But guess what? It didn't take 24 hours. The restorer restored it. <laughs> Hear me. In this communion, nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing shall be lost. If you are saying amen, you are saying better amen. No wonder scripture said they were breaking bread daily. As you partake of this communion, your total head will be restored. I'm saying to someone here, the Holy Ghost just mentioned it to me now. That medical report that is a threat. God will hear, hear it by this communion. God will disgrace that medical report by this communion. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Rise up to your feet right now and pray from the depth of your spirit. Lord, as I partake of this communion, judge every sickness. Judge every affliction. Judge every infirmity. Hold on, hold on. I just saw something now. There is a sister that is having a pulse discharge. Pulse, pulse. Not blood, pulse. Pulse. You have not mentioned this to anybody. God told me just now you will be healed by this communion. <laughs> Lift up your voice and pray from the depths of your heart. Jesus, you are the healer. Announce your presence in my body. By this communion, heal me totally now. 
I am going home recovered. I am going home restored. I am going home delivered. Jesus, you are the healer. Heal me now. Lerindolo Shato Epele Dosa. Lian Tole Rigeneto. Ikopla Leseda. Berianos Negaleos and Zodeliata. Holy Ghost. Let the power of resurrection flow through this communion. Let the power of resurrection flow through this communion. Jesus, judge every affliction by this communion. Disarm every infirmity. Disarm every disease. Disarm every affliction. Let the stronghold of the affliction be wiped out. It is written, whatsoever my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted. Oh Lord, by this communion, let the yoke of this affliction be uprooted, be uprooted, be uprooted. High blood pressure, die by this communion. Ovarian cyst, shrink by this communion. Leratekelo shapa, iladone zekoteta. Kidney stone, melt by this communion. Le parado sinete. Yekataria, le bondoro shakata. HIV, die by this communion. Le randolobo shatana. Inzese. Poor eyesight, be healed by this communion. Le kotekete, ilandoroto. Witchcraft poison fired by coven powers by this communion be flushed out in the name of Jesus. Zekuteka Leyando Berusa Sune Zekoteko Liapa Diabetes today is your end by this communion be wiped out in the name of Jesus. Every yoke of diabetes, you are cursed in the name of Jesus. Jesus, whatever God has not planted is discomforting any life. By this communion, swallow it, uproot it, eliminate it, eliminate the affliction. Eliminate the affliction. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Anyone here under any form of marine attack? Attacking your system, your body, your organs. I decree by this communion today mark the end of that torment. As you partake of this communion, anything that is a disease that is not making your life to be at ease, Jesus the healer will wipe them out now. All eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. This is your golden moment and opportunity. You want to make it right with Jesus? So that his hand will touch you. Wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray